okay guys so in this video i will talk about torsion okay so how to analyze any material that is subjected to your torsional force and before uh, diving into the torsion directly i would like to discuss a very small topic and i have got this question from one of you and he has asked about a very critical question you may think this is silly but i think you should also ask this type of question okay so let's say we have a slab in one of my video i have discussed about the load distribution in your slab and there i have mentioned that uh, it distributes something like this one okay and the question is why second question is something like uh, in line theory and blah 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 okay so just uh, i am honestly speaking i really don't know anything about in line theory okay i'm sorry for that but i have an answer why this is happen okay so before answering you i would like to mention you something okay so let's say you are isaac newton sitting below some apple tree okay and there is let's say uh, this is the apple and if let's say you are lucky and you are here sitting if this apple by chance detached from this tree where it will go well let me answer you this will go this side isn't it no this will go this side isn't it no then yes it will come to you and it will take rest to your lap why the same answer why got it the whole universe the whole universe is based on a single theory that is least work theory okay everybody wants to work least even myself even yourself we always want to work least okay if this is a road okay and this is another road definitely if you are not mad you will not follow this path you will definitely follow this path this is the path of least work okay so now if this is 45 degree uh, let me draw it more clearly this is 45 degree okay this is 45 degree okay so now if this is 45 degree can you define any other line in this axis system from which the distance from this point to this axis as well as this axis is equal okay so in this picture well let me clean all this bullshit okay please don't take it otherwise okay uh, so consider first let's say i have this slab okay and i don't know how this load transport okay let's say i am sitting here so of course i am a load and i supposed to go to this beam no yes you are true you are correct i supposed to go to this beam this is the shortest for me and it will possible if if i draw a line somehow here from this line both the beam are equal so all the load in this part will come to this beam and all the load in this part will come to this beam now what about this load let's say uh, this is my girlfriend this is it my girlfriend and what about her whether she will go to uh, let me draw like this okay uh, yes this one now tell me where she will go to this beam or to this beam which is nearer of course this is nearest she will go to this one okay and if you plot each and every point and to their nearest path in this case all this four beam 
I don't think that you will get some other configuration expect except this one. Okay, so that is why this happened. I, I am sorry that I can't answer you about your inline uh, because I don't know this. Okay, so that's all. Now dive into our today's topic that is torsion. Okay, so it is almost 5 minutes over and uh, to discuss torsion, I think I will take almost uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so this video is going to be quite lengthy. So you may have some coffee or cup of tea. Okay, so let's start. Let's say very first uh, we have a circular shaft. Okay, so we have a circular shaft and it is fixed at ceiling this is the set okay this is the set and it is attached to the ceiling clear now you are applying some uh, torque t okay by the way uh, the diameter or the radius of this set is r this is the radius of the set and the length is also given as l okay so what is the result of this torsion if you apply this torque what will happen well definitely this shaft will rotate so how to visualize that well Let us say first you have a chalk and you have marked some vertical line like this. Okay. So, after application of this torque, what will happen? This line will be rotated like this. Okay. And let us say the total rotation here, the total rotation here is denoted by theta. Okay, so theta is the rotation for this entire length. Okay, so for this entire length L, theta is the rotation, or you can say that uh, the rotation per unit length or the angle of twist, this is the more technical term. Okay, the angle of twist per unit length can be expressed as let us say theta dashed and it is equal with theta divided by L. This is the angle of twist per unit length. Okay. So, now let us consider a section Mn here. Okay. So, this is the section Mn okay, at a distance of x from fixed end. Okay, and here we are considering another section m dashed n dashed, and the distance between this m n and m dash n dash is yes, you are right, dx. Okay, now we are simply isolating this one to discuss all this torsional effect. Okay, so it looks like this one. This is the shaft, okay. So, this is the upper part, you can say this is m in, and this is the lower part m dashed in dashed, okay. So, due to the twist, initially the line was like this. If we had two line, initially they were like this. Okay, but after the application of the torsion, it has become like this. Okay, and this. Okay, so here you can see that there is no change in length, only the angle has been changed. This angle has been changed, and if we had an element, okay that is under the action of shear stress, it is possible that, uh, sorry, 
if we had an element that is under the action of shear stress like this it is possible to make it distorted like this okay like this but there will be no change in length of any edge okay so here there is no change in length but angle has been changed so we can assume that this element this element is subjected to pure shear or shear stress which is acting like this clear so when this is under the action of shear stress of course there is some shear strain and what is this length this is dx okay so this length is dx and what is this deformation this deformation can you define this well theta dash was change or uh, theta dash was angular twist for unit length okay so with respect to this top edge what is the angular twist of this bottom edge that is theta by l times dx because change in length is dx clear so this is the total angular twist okay and uh, let's say this was the line and you have rotated it by degree of uh, phi so what is this curve curve is, what is the length of this curve if the radius is r this is r times phi okay so the rotation here is this much so this is the phi okay and the radius was r so we can measure the deformation due to shear that is this one this is the deformation and this deformation is simply phi times r or you can say that theta by l times dx times r this is the deformation and the length was dx so you know that in the last video we have talked a lot about pure shear and there the shear strain was expressed in terms of some angle that is gamma and here this gamma is uh, this one okay this is the gamma and gamma can be expressed as your deformation that is theta by l times dx times r divided by length that is dx cancel dx dx and you are getting shear strain gamma as theta by l or twist for unit length okay times r that's it that's the shear strain you have also learned that stress shear stress is proportional with strain or stress can be expressed as g times gamma where g is the modulus of elasticity in shear clear so let's clean the board again okay and just rewrite the equation of the stress okay so stress is coming as g times theta by l times r very important formula okay so stress can be expressed in terms of g and theta by l and as well as the radius okay so this is valid the outer side outer surface of the sat we are considering here everything at the outer surface of the sat here this is the outer surface okay so if it is valid at the outer surface if we consider some inner circle like this okay so the plan was like this this was the plan dimension okay this was r and we are considering everything 
at this surface. At this surface, the equation of stress is simply your uh, g times theta by L times R. Okay. Let us say now we are considering some inner surface. Okay. So, this is the inner surface. Okay. This is the inner surface at a distance of now let us say this is smaller. So, for this inner surface also this equation is valid and in this inner surface the stress can be written as g times theta by L times smaller. Okay. So, here you can see that stress in any cross section is a function of r. Okay. So, if we simply plot the shear stress distribution for this plane, you should do it yourself. Just pause the video, try to do it. Okay. So, this was center. So, at center r is 0, so stress is 0 and at surface r is capital R and stress is maximum. So, here this is maximum and here it is minimum and it varies linearly from this equation. So, stress distribution looks like this. Agree? Now, do not forget that initially we had applied uh, a torque T. Okay. And we will try to uh, correlate the stress with this torque. Here we have got the stress in terms of uh, angular twist that is theta. Okay. Now we will try to get the relation between torque and the stress. Okay. So for that, what we have to do? We have to yes, at the very first we have to clean everything. Okay. Okay. So now again draw the circle, the worst ever circle that is only drawn by me. Okay. Yeah, this time this time it is quite better. I love it. Okay, so now we will consider some uh, elementary circle at a distance of smaller. Okay, and there this is the circle with width of dear 12 standard math again this is the strip we have considered okay so what is the stress here average stress average stress tau can be expressed as g times theta y l times r because the width is very small only dear okay so we can neglect the variation dear tends to 0. Okay. So, this is the average stress acting on this very small strip. Okay. So, what is the total force? Let us say the area of this strip is uh, dA. Okay. So, dA is the area of this strip. Okay. So, the total force acting on this strip due to this shear stress can be uh, written as df that is equate with tau times da okay so replace tau with this one that is g times theta by l times r times da okay now if we take the moment of this force Okay, so now from tau or stress we have got force that is df. If we take the moment about center of this df, we will get the moment or the torque. And let us say that is dt and it is r times df. Okay, or r times g times theta by l times r times dA. I am just replacing this one. 
okay in place of df so now you have got something like this okay so dt you are getting dp is equal with your g theta by l time r square of dA. If we simply integrate this both side over the whole cross sectional area, we are getting torque as g times theta by l times moment of inertia of dA over the cross sectional area A and if you are familiar with the polar moment of inertia you know that uh, this one okay this one is nothing but polar moment inertia that is j and for this case this is pi by 32 times uh, d to the power 4 but we have r okay so pi by 32 times 2r to the power 4 that's it so now you have an equation where torque is related with g theta by l times g sorry j okay so this is j this is one more equation and this was another equation okay so of course if you replace g theta by l here you will get a relation that is t equate with uh, g theta by l is nothing but stress by r times j now you have got a function of torque in terms of stress so it's almost uh, 22 minute i think that's it